Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Jobadiah Christensen, and I just saw this article pop up, and I wanted to read it with you and uh, go over some implications of it um, immediately. So this is very recent. Uh, this article was posted on the SmithsonianMag.com. So the Smithsonian is a very reputable organization. Smithsonian obviously are the, it runs mu uh, museums in the U.S. and possibly around the world. I don't actually know that much more about it, but anything that, that's posted on Smithsonian should be uh, re uh, very uh, verifiable and accurate. So uh, I just saw this and I wanted to go through it. Uh, just to give you some background, uh, I have a master's in history and in undergrad I minored in archaeology. I've done archaeological uh, digs in the Middle East. I've done uh, five field seasons. It's all at the same site, which at some point I may uh, make a video about and talk more about the site I've worked at, but for now I just wanted to jump into it. So here's the title, Archaeologists Unearth Possible Shrine to Romulus, Rome's Legendary Founder. Now, uh, those of you here who may remember your early Roman history, uh, there's a myth of Romulus and Remus. Now, I have read a translated version of Livy's account of Romulus and Remus, and in Livy's account of Romulus and Remus, uh, I'm trying to remember the specific details, but basically what uh, what's the myth of Romulus and Remus is they are brothers, and they are put into, um, I believe... They are uh, born to this woman, and I forget uh, who the husband is. I don't remember if the if the man is an actual man or if he's a deity. But the woman can't, uh, she can't have them. She can't protect them. So she puts them in a basket, and they float down the river, actually. Doesn't that sound familiar? And then the basket is found uh, by wolves, and wolves... Ray is Romulus and Remus. Now, later on in the story, Romulus and Remus grow up, and they return to Rome, which at this time is just a city. It's just a city-state. It's not an entire culture or empire as we think of Rome in later days. This is the literal founding of Rome. This is what the Romans used to describe. This is their myth of how they came into being and why they were so great. Uh, Romulus and Remus. They actually went to Rome and they got into an argument. Uh, they built a wall around Rome. And then uh, they got into an argument. And what I remember is as Remus was trying to enter Rome, he jumped over the wall. And Romulus stabbed him and killed his brother. So that's why Romulus is uh, mentioned here and not Remus. So it's kind of tragic, kind of a tragic myth story. I believe that their mother was descended from the Trojans um, because there's another story called the Aeneid by Virgil, which details, which I've not read, but I, I just know a little bit about the Aeneid by Virgil. Virgil was, uh, I believe he was another Latin orator. And the Aeneid, uh, covers the journey of Aeneas from Troy uh, through Carthage and then to, on to Rome. And I believe Aeneas' children are Romulus and Remus. I could be wrong. We can look that up. If you can fact check me, that's just what I remember. So, uh, unearth possible shrine to Romulus. So, all right. So, what's a shrine? So, a shrine's going to be something that's going to commemorate who that person was. Um, obviously, what I'm going to be looking for in this article uh, uh, things that'll indicate that it's Romulus. So that's going to be something that indicates that it's wolf, a wolf-like, um, possibly an anthropomorphic type of wolf, maybe doing human things, um, or an actual name inscribed on it. Those are the two fa indicators that we might have that this is actually to Romulus. So that's what I'm going to be looking for in this article. Okay, underground temple and sarcophagus discovered in the Roman Forum may pay homage to the mythical figure. Now, the Roman Forum is in Rome, obviously. The uh, Forum was this, uh, the Forum was not one building. The Forum is like this large area. Think of it like, um, kind of think of it like if you go to Washington, D.C., uh, our modern day Forum would be like Capitol Hill. You've got the Capitol building, you've got the White House, you've got all this other stuff. Capitol Hill is kind of like 
what the form was to the Romans. They had all these different buildings, uh, temples, marketplace, um, structures there. And so that was the place to be. That was the central place in Rome and the central place of the whole empire was in the Roman Forum. All right. Just like the Capitol Hill is kind of the center of the United States and much of the Western world. All right. Here's this nice picture. A 55-inch wide sarcophagus and what appears to be an altar are seen in an underground chamber at the ancient Roman Forum. Okay. Underground chamber at the Forum. So this predates the Forum because it's underground, right? That's how archaeology works. Anything that's beneath is obviously earlier than what's on top of it because you can't put something on top if it was before what's, it's, what's underneath it. That's just basic logic, and that's how archaeologists work. Okay. Rome wasn't built in a day, and according to myth, it wouldn't be around at all if not for the heroic efforts of Romulus and Remus, twins suckled by a benevolent she-wolf who found them abandoned on the banks of a river shortly after birth. Later, when the pair founded the iconic city in 753 BC, Romulus allegedly proceeded to celebrate the momentous occasion by stabbing with and then murdering his brother, basically. Where fiction ends, in fact, begins in this legend remains a topic of intense debate among scholars, but the brother's legacy undoubtedly left its mark on Roman culture, and now archaeologists may be one step closer to unraveling a crucial chapter in the twins' lupine tale. All right. Excavations at the Roman Forum, once a bustling center that hosted many of the ancient city's most prominent events, has revealed a subterranean shrine. All right, you're going to do the good stuff. Researchers think it's dedicated to Romulus, according to Associated Press. So there's obviously an article at Associated Press we could also read and go look at that. Dated to roughly the 6th century BC, the underground chamber contains what looks like an altar, as well as a 55-inch sarcophagus that doesn't appear to contain bones okay so the sarcophagus is what you bury people in generally uh there's no bones in there which either means that bones never were in there that's one option uh bones could have been in there but they were could have been removed by a grave robber unlikely or an animal unlikely if it was covered uh or the bones could have just deteriorated because we're talking about something that happened literally 2,500 years ago. So the bones could have just disintegrated into dust and be gone, all right? This is an extraordinary discovery. Alfonso Russo, director of the Col Coliseum Archaeological Park, told reporters on Monday, as quoted, the forum never ceases to yield amazing fresh treasures, okay? All right, so we've got, here's a nice picture of the Roman Forum. This is what it looks like today if you go to Rome. I've not been there, but this is, I've seen pictures of it. Easily identifiable, structures of temples, um, porticos, courtyards, things like that. All right, let's move on. Let's see. Okay, this is a short article. Uh, though the apparent lack of human remains may make the claim difficult to verify, scholars suspect the altar sits atop the spot where ancient Romans believed Romulus was buried, according to a report from Italy's Agenza Nazionale Stampa Associata. Obviously some sort of paper or something there. Uh, now the thing that I that jumps out at me as I mentioned above is they say it dates from the 6th century. So we're talking about probably 150 years after the so-called Romulus lived and Rome was founded. Um, so that that's a pretty large gap. I mean that's like today. So this is 2020. That's like going basically we that's like saying okay we want to make a uh, we're going to make a shrine to Abraham Lincoln. And then we're going to go and, and put one up. And so we're already 150 years removed. It, the accuracy of that. And we have pretty good accuracy now because we actually have photographs of Abraham Lincoln and things like that. But um, just just keep that in mind. So the location of the discovery is also fairly close to the Lapis Niger. Another shrine in the forum where in 1899... Researchers unearthed an inscribed black shrine warning its readers not to disturb its sacred grounds, which contained the remains of a holy king, as Andreas Steiner, editor of the magazine Archeo, tells the Times. Scholars have long suspected this is a reference to Romulus, who, according to myth, met a tragic end at the hands of an infuriated Roman senate, a death violent enough, perhaps, to match his brothers. All right, so I've not heard about the Lapis Niger, 
and uh, um, I've not heard about this black shrine at all, so that's interesting. I'd, I'd have to go look into that and see what evidence there is for that. Um, as to this myth, as I mentioned, um, where I've read about the myth was in Livy's. But anyone who studied Livy knows that Livy was not trying to write an accurate historical account of the founding of Rome. Livy was creating a myth because Livy was living at the very beginning of the Roman Empire. Livy was writing this um, in the time period after Julius Caesar was stabbed by the Senate and Julius Caesar's nephew, Octavian, became Caesar Augustus and became the emperor, appointed himself as emperor uh, over the Roman Empire. And that that, that transitional phase from a Roman Republic into the Roman Empire, an imperial Rome, right? It was a republic, and it transitioned into an, an empire ruled by one person, okay? Uh, so Livy wrote these stories about the history of Rome, but he was living in this time where everything that they, they held dear to, to uh, about Rome was changing. And uh, obviously... The story of Romulus being stabbed by the Senate echoes uh, what happened to Julius Caesar. And so that's obviously a political statement made by Livy to write that about Romulus. And we can't take that as historical uh, accuracy at all. Okay? Just a, just an aside. Although, of course, that's, that's what I've read. I haven't read any other uh, stories or traditions about Romulus and Remus from other authors. I just know the Livy version. Okay? I studied that in undergrad. And I wrote a paper about it. So, the narrative has proven difficult to verify, and in ancient, recent years, researchers have accumulated a decent amount of evidence suggesting Rome's architecture predates the twins' arrival by about a century. Mm -hmm. Migrants may have even settled the region cells as early as 1000 BC. Right. Okay. So, basically, there's structures there that predate the traditional founding of Rome in 753 BC. Obviously, um, so still the legend of Romulus and Remus has endured, at least in part due to the story's wild and memorable twists and turns. Given the tale's significance for Romans, both ancient and modern, the findings at the Forum may still stir up a fair bit of excitement. Whether Romulus existed or not is not important. Italian archaeologist tells, what matters is this figure is considered by the ancients to mark the political birth of the city. Right. Okay. So he's just confirming that this is just it's just a it's just a nice giant um, something to something to remember. It's just like a it's a myth, but it has significance. It, um, this was written by a journalist, not an historian or an archaeologist. Uh, so I am curious. I really want to see. I want to know more about the the actual ruins. Now, obviously, if this was if this was just found. Like, this could have just been found over the weekend or just this week. Um, so there's not going to be specific uh, architectural or archaeological details um, because it's not published. So, um, so I, I don't know. So what do you guys think? What do you think about this sarcophagus? Um, it's It's kind of speculation. I really need to see more. Uh, could just be a sarcophagus. I mean, at the very least, it seems like it's a sarcophagus. We know it's below the Forum, so it predates traditional Rome, and it seems to be indicating the importance of someone in early Roman history. That's basically all we can gain from this. So this find, at the very least, is it commemorates some sort of a per important person in early Roman history, or possibly even... Um, well, they said it dates from the 6th century BC, so that certainly is early Roman history. And that's basically all we can say about it. Um, if they didn't find bones, we can't say more. If there's no inscriptions, we can't say more. They're just making speculations that it's Romulus. So, there you go. That's my take on it. Hope that you learned something. I really would like to see... Uh, I wish they put, like... Where they pulled their facts from, because I really want to see like the actual find. So let's let's do a search here, okay? Let's. Um, I should have opened this up before, but 
Google. Let's look up archaeologists unearth. Let's let's see. Shrine to Romulus. I didn't spell Romulus right. All right. What is this? The North State Journal. I don't know what that is. Um, the North State Journal, New York Times. Okay, here we go. Archaeology.org. This is going to be a little bit more um, archaeological. So let's look at this. This is good. I should have pulled this up before and, and done this, but here we are. All right, so this was Wednesday. I'm just going to scan this very quickly. I'm not going to read the whole thing. The space, here we go. This is details that I need. The space consists of a hypo, hypogeum or an underground temple. Okay. A 4.5 foot long sarcophagus dated to the 6th century and what may be an altar. And then it's also situated near Lapis Niger, which we learned about from the other article. All right. Shrine thought to predate the Roman Forum. The ancient Roman historian Varro recorded that Romans believed an altar had been placed on the spot near the Lapis Niger where Romulus was buried, Rousseau explained. To read about the discovery of a statue head... Yeah, I don't care about the statue head. Um, okay, that's literally all that there is. Um, what about this report? Is this going to link to it? Is it in... Okay, hypogenous sarcophagus. Here we go. Um, this is in Italian, except I don't read Italian, but I know what that says. Um, dates, okay, let's scan this article. This is now our third article. I'll put all these links in the YouTube, uh, description. So you guys can read these as well. Space is believed to be part of a votive area called a Harun, devoted to the founder of Rome. Okay. All right, here we go. The sarcophagus made out of the same tufa rock that built the capital is about 1.4 meters long. Okay, it's made next to the Curia Comitum complex, a few meters away from the famed Lapis Niger. So it's only a few meters away. I'm curious how they found it because it said they found Lapis Niger in 1899. So this is 120 years later. Um, they probably just weren't Excavating, I'm just curious how they came upon this. Um, and from that other article, we'll have to look into Varro. Check out what Varro said. I'm not familiar with his, his writings. Extraordinary discovery, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it was made on, during a dig that started a year ago to celebrate and commemorate the discoveries made by the famed archaeologists. Okay, so they basically were, they decided let's pick up where this guy excavated that other the other thing uh the lapis niger okay so that's why they didn't discover it till now they were just decided to continue basically his excavation so that's that's good news to have hypogeum is located below the entrance stairway to the curia where senators meant to vote okay that's interesting they're located below the entrance stairway. Okay. So they so there possibly was a shrine beneath the uh, Senate chambers. That's cool. That's significant. The new entrance chairs were built. Okay. The altar was placed on the spot where the Romans believed Romulus was buried. But again, all this stuff was kind of happening year, hundreds of years after the fact. Okay. This is going to a reading of the ancient Roman historian Varro, cited in the poet Horace's Epodes. Okay, I haven't read that either. This is not an accident that this underground altar was placed close to the Lapis Niger. Right, it's probably not an accident. Uh, archaeologists like to jump to these conclusions. I certainly have before in the past, so I'm just, I'm always, I always kind of like to read stuff skeptically. It's always better to read it skeptically and come uh, at it from a different angle. The excavation and valorization of this monument to the cult of Romulus. Okay, so they uh, were making some sort of declaration that's just this morning about it. Right, it's an underground temple or tomb. So, 
Hypogea will often contain niches for cremated human remains or locally for buried remains. Okay. Hypogeum can also refer to any antique building or part of the building built below ground, such as a series of tunnels. All right, and that's all they talk about. So we've now looked at three articles. Um, I still would like to see a lot more archaeological detail, but they, as I said, they can't probably release that. It looks like it was just literally found a few days ago. So we'll have to wait, wait months or possibly even years before there's a formal uh, report on this with the actual details of the archaeological finds but uh yeah so as i said before uh they don't have any specific details for why this could be romulus uh basically like i said it's probably uh just dedicated to uh someone that was very important in the early history of rome uh it's some sort of a shrine and temple and sarcophagus so that makes sense and later on they it, it was so significant that they purposefully built the senate chamber so that's all we know. Um, that's basically it. I don't... So that's it. Um, I'm thinking back through Livy's history to remember the names of other early Romans that could be there. Um, but honestly, there there wasn't that much in Livy's writings between Romulus and Remus and the formation of the Senate, um, which was... I believe in the 400s, but I could be wrong in that fact. So anyway, because uh, Rome had a king, and the, at least in Livy's writings, Livy wrote about how Rome had a king. They had a kings descended from Romulus um, a, until they decided they didn't want kings, and they, they that's when they formed the Senate. And that was, I think, around 450 BC, uh, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, though. It's been a while. It's been like eight years since I've read that. So... Um, yeah, so what do you guys think about this? What's your take on it? I'm curious to see if you have any more information. Uh, I'm going to grab these articles and uh, throw them in the YouTube so you can read them for yourself. Um, but, all right. Uh, let me know if you have any more information on Romulus. You can fact check me. I probably got some details wrong. Um, and uh, if... Uh, if you have any archaeological uh, reports, articles, information, or, or historical finds that you would like me to comment on, uh, please just leave me a comment on YouTube, and I will look into that. But have a great rest of your day.